Dear students, now I'll be introducing you to a few concepts and terminologies in molecular evolution and phylogenetics. To slightly hint at the background, so phylogenetics is the study of eliciting or finding evolutionary relationships between different species by using their DNA, RNA or protein sequences. There are several algorithms and tools which are there to help us build these phylogenetic trees. So the output from such studies is a phylogenetic tree as you can see in this slide. So this phylogenetic tree, as you can see, includes five sequences taken from different species and then linked together through C, D, B and A. The five sequences are called the terminal nodes. So these can be the genome sequences or the protein sequences from related organisms or species. Also here at the bottom are your internal nodes. So these are the common ancestors as inferred by processing the sequence data. So here what is important to understand is the term internal nodes. So because these are the terminal nodes or external nodes, these are the internal nodes. These nodes are not shown to the user except in the form of a phylogenetic tree. Okay, so the second term that you need to understand is the ancestor. So one and two these two sequences here have an ancestor in C. So the sequence C has evolved into 2 and 1. Similarly, the sequences 3 and 4 have evolved from sequence D. And sequence 5 has evolved from sequence A. Moreover, the sequences C and D have evolved from B. So this is how this tree can be interpreted. The other thing that you need to remember is inferred. So these ancestors here, so since these are now called ancestors, so these ancestors are actually calculated and inferred. We did not know about these ancestors and their order, so we inferred them using phylogenetics. So they are inferred using the algorithms that we will discuss later. And they are purely inferred based on the sequence data that is placed at the terminal nodes. Moreover, so once you develop this tree, then this tree can have multiple arrangements or assortments. So one or two are organized in different ways within the phylogenetic tree as shown here. And the overall topology of the tree is also varied. But as you can see, the relationship between the sequences is conserved. Let's take a look. So C and D have an ancestor in B. So this is true for all of these trees. Similarly, B has an ancestor in A. So essentially these trees are the same except that they have been organized in different order. So this means that all trees have the same meaning. Next, we'd like to see what is the difference between rooted and unrooted trees. So rooted trees have an ancestor that is obvious. So in this case, A is the ancestor at the root, while B, D and C are ancestors that are not located at the root. Also, there is something called the outgroup, which is 
a sequence that has got nothing to do with most of the ancestors here. So as you can see, 5 has an ancestor in A only and has got nothing to do with C, B and D. So the evolution has occurred in such a way that A was the earliest sequence and then B arrived and then B gave rise to D and C and then D gave rise to 3 and 4 while C gave rise to 1 and 2. Meanwhile, A gave rise to 5 as well. In case of unrooted trees, as you can see here, A was the root in this rooted tree, but here there is no root. So the root node is the ancestor of all other nodes, but this is not shown by using an unrooted tree. So hence the direction of evolution cannot be inferred from unrooted trees, which can be obviously seen in case of a rooted tree because A evolved into B and B evolved into C and D and so on. So in conclusion, phylogenetics specifies evolutionary relationship hierarchy within the species and also the trees that are formed as, as a result of this phyl phylogenetic analysis can be rooted and unrooted with the rooted trees showing the direction of evolution as well as the time.